You may be pleased to learn that Agent Smith from The Matrix was wrong, although he was wrong in some rather interesting ways. Stay with me on this one. So you guys remember this scene from The Matrix. It came to me when I tried to classify your species. I realized that you're not actually mammals. Okay, first off, and let's just get this one out of the way, okay? Of course humans are mammals. Agent Smith, as we covered in this video, just because a species superficially behaves differently than its closest relatives, that doesn't mean that it's disqualified from its branch on the family tree, okay? That's not how systematics works. All right, moving on. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed. The only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. You know what it is? A virus. There are a number of interesting talking points here. For one thing, Smith isn't exactly right about how viruses work. It's true that viruses are, by and large, associated with a kind of slash and burn lifestyle, but when you look at the bigger picture, it's not necessarily good for the virus to be too bad for its host. A highly virulent virus, one that grows and spreads quickly, is effective in the short run, but a dead host isn't as good at spreading the virus around as a living host, which is why in the long run, evolution should favor somewhat lower virulence. So a virus that's been living alongside its host for many generations is just as likely to be rather tame, like the common cold. This is what's known as the trade-off hypothesis of parasite evolution, and it may help explain, among other things, why some of our nastiest diseases are caused by viruses and other pathogens that spread through mosquitoes and ticks. Because their use of public transportation, as it were, makes them less reliant on the host staying alive and well for a long time. Another thing that Smith says is more unambiguously bullcrap, and that's the idea that animals somehow instinctively seek some kind of balance in their resource use. To disprove this, we need only look at invasive species like rabbits in Australia or rats in New Zealand, which have multiplied like crazy since their introduction, eating native species and ecosystems into collapse. The only thing their instincts are telling them is to eat more food. Or, for a more classical example, look at plagues of grasshoppers, like in the Bible. That's a real thing that happens, and the grasshoppers are doing exactly what Smith says is unique to viruses. The truth is more complicated. Nature does balance itself out over time, but that's more to do with the fact that everyone evolves. Both the user of a resource, like a hawk, and the resource itself, like the mice that the hawk eats. Natural selection will favor hawks that are good at hunting mice, but it will also favor mice that are good at avoiding hawks. This is what's known as an evolutionary arms race. And because the cost of getting eaten is always greater than the cost of not getting this particular meal, we expect the prey to usually come out slightly ahead, at least provided the predator has been around for long enough that the prey has had time to adapt to it. Which brings us to humans. Now, clearly Agent Smith is on to something about humans being different from the rest of nature. You need only read the news to hear about how we're rapidly depleting our planet's resources, and it's tempting to think that this is because we're somehow evil, that we lack some kind of natural sense of compassion for our environment that every other creature instinctively has. But as we've seen, that's not true. Every evolving thing on this planet, living or virus, is geared to consume as much as it can. What sets humans apart, at least if you ask me, is our technology. And I guess we're kind of leaving biology, moving into philosophy now, so I'm going to take off my bio hat, put my philosophy hat on. We've evolved this thing called culture, which lets us accumulate information, spread it around, and rapidly pass it on without having to store it in our genes. Now, other animals do this, notably whales and apes and some birds. The topic for another video, perhaps, but nobody does it like humans. We've basically found a way to bypass the whole genetics part of natural selection. Now, don't get me wrong, that's amazing, but it also means that there's very few things that can evolve to keep up with us. Natural selection can improve things from one generation to the next, but just to take a single example, within the past single generation of human life, 
Computer processing power increased by about almost 10,000 times. Similar patterns apply to our abilities to fight diseases and farm crops and improve our population densities and etc. Humans aren't evil. We have the same drives and instincts as every other species. We're just so good at consuming resources that evolution can't keep us in check. Nothing like us has ever existed on Earth before. Which means, rather soberingly, I think, that the only thing that can truly control us is us. If we want to live on this planet without driving ourselves into extinction, we're going to have to learn to be even more unusual as a species than we already are. In fact, uh, this is just occurring to me, we're going to have to try to be precisely what Agent Smith seems to think that every other mammal already is. Namely, the first species ever to actively regulate its own resource consumption. But that's, uh, that's far beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to say, like humans, we're not that awful, and uh, things are complicated. So yeah, great movie, excellent scene, but Agent Smith fails at biology. Mammals are not magically kind to their environments, humans are not magically not a mammal, and viruses, well, they're not all the nasty, plague-causing parasites that they're made out to be. Not all of them are that bad. Some of them are even weirdly good. We'll talk more about that in the next episode.